Um, and can you please tell us about a time when you had a difficult patient? Um, so there was one patient at the very first um, clinical rotation. Um, she was known to be difficult. The uh, cold light was on for a while, but nobody checked on her. So I asked my nurse if I it's okay for me to check on her. Um, so when I heard that, I first check in with my own emotions because I really don't like to drag any negative feeling to this patient. I want to be as clear as possible when I, you know, so that I don't make judgment in, you know, in the wrong way. I don't want to have a crowdy mind. So I did that and I introduced myself to this patient and I, I assessed her needs and she was basically really frustrated because she was patient and she developed the right side of hemiplegia and she was right-handed. Um, so I tried to help her um, to promote her ADL so she can promote and she can do her ADL by herself, um, including like the reorganizing furniture or some, it, it wasn't major things that I needed to do. And she, she was saying some discomfort because she hasn't turned for a while. So I asked nursing assistant to help me because I was not familiar with the, um, the changing position yet. So I asked for help and we worked together. This patient was really, really thankful. And she said she felt like she was hard first time in this unit. So I was really glad. And this patient really was you know, looking for me all the time um, if she needs anything, but she wasn't really needy. She wasn't, she really needed something or she needed help and she asks, but yeah, after I get I did the treatment. No, she did. She wasn't needy. We had a really good trust, re trusting relationship, and I really enjoyed working with this patient. Actually, okay. I graduated from accelerated BSN program. I, I am licensed RN, and I am also a international board of certified lactation consultant (IBCLC). I also obtained a certificate called breastfeeding NICU infants. And I have um, NRP and stable certified certification as well. I I am volunteering, which is a pediatric palliative home. And I had my senior preceptorship at NICU. Um, um, and I had the pediatric rotation. Oh, should I talk about that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I great. had a pediatric rotation. And um, honestly, I felt like I belonged there. Um, one of the biggest things, of course, the magnet certified practice, you know, um, implemented very beautifully in the unit. And also the other thing it was really impressed with was the communication tools, the PKRs. It was very well utilized by everybody in this in um in the medical staff team, um, including you know, uh, child life, the music therapist, everybody was great at communicating to the patients and families. So that was something I was really inspired. And that's one of the reasons I really would love to work with. And NICU is it's always my passion um, to support the family at the beginning of their life. So that's that's why I, I apply for this position. Awesome. Awesome. Love that. And I'm going to go fast to see if we can squeeze in. I have like 50 questions. I'm going to just boom, 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 boom. Um, yep. Can you please tell us a little bit more about why you would like to work? Um, so my background is actually a immunology scientist. So I do have a great EBP habit. It's almost a habit for me. Any any career I work with, uh, evidence-based practice is the basis. And I would actually um, incorporate the, the evidence-based practice to improve um, patient safety, quality improvement, everything. It's just the way I work. And I really feel like I can thrive in this environment. Um, and like I said, it was just how people care to the patient. It's something I'm really passionate about. I would love to have a family-centered individualized care. So I would love to be part of practice, you know, great environment for me to work in. And it's a great environment for patients to be in. So I would love to be in a part of the team. Okay, perfect. Can you please tell us why why NICU? Um, so NICU, uh, one of the biggest, biggest thing is of course, I'm being a lactation consultant and um, lactation practice is really important in NICU infants. Um, and I 
like I said earlier, I have a certificate um, called Respiring NICU Infants because I was interested in, um, you know, just supporting any kind of, you know, difficulty or challenges uh, with as much as I could, um, as as promptly as possible as well. Um, and NICU because I myself had a, a hard time with my first infant and it was challenging. At that time, I met so many nurses who was very caring and passionate. Um, and I basically that was a turning point for me to pursue my nursing career. And I would love to be basically like them. Um, so I would love to support everybody who's going through a challenging time as a new family, a new parent. So that's the reason why I would like to be part of NICU family. Okay. Can you please tell us about a time when you provided compassionate care or went above and beyond? Yes. Um, so when I was, there was this patient who, um, who just gave birth to premature infant. And she had, because of the COVID, there was a restriction. And there was only one overnight visitor allowed. And she, they had to be pre-registered. And this patient, pre-registered person was her, but got COVID. So she couldn't actually come into the building. Um, she was really overwhelmed and also withdrawn. And I was having some conversation, trying to encourage her, you know, just try to be active listener for this patient. And while I was talking to her, she got phone call. And that was from her best friend. She just arrived. From, so, but it was after visitor hours. So I wasn't really sure what to do right away. So I talked to the charge nurse in the unit, just tried to escalate the concern to the charge nurse. And charge nurse escalated the mother to um, appropriate, um, appropriate chain of command. And she got the permission to switch the, the approved personnel so that the, her best friend is now available to come in. And when she came in and I saw the patient face, you know, really lit and so happy, I was really, I was really thrilled. I was really glad that I could give that kind of care. And it was, you know, it was a little bit extra work, but it wasn't that much. And, you know, I was really, really glad that I could give them that kind of um, care in that setting. Perfect. Okay. Um, can you please tell us about a time when you made a mistake in your clinical experiences? Yes. Um, I had this Spanish speaking patient who had on her femur and, um, I knew that. And I, when I passed by her bed, uh, a room, I noticed her crying on the, on the bed and she, she was really limited in English. And I, because she was crying, first thing I came, it came to my mind was, was pain. So I accidentally, that was a mistake I made. Um, I asked her if she was in pain and she nodded. Um, so I called the nurse and nurse came in with the nursing assistant who speaks Spanish because she knew about this patient. And um, when they had a conversation, no, she was not in pain. She was actually just missing her home. And I basically kind of disturbed everybody's work, work. Uh, workplace and I, I felt really bad. Um, I apologized to the patient and she was okay. She said she's okay. She knew I was just trying to care for her. And I also apologized to my nurse and nursing assistant. I'm so sorry, you know, sorry for disturbing their routine work. Um, and they were okay, but I also assessed my own, you know, doing. And I realized that I, I made the wrong assumption and I really should not make assumption without assessing the patient. And she could tell, she could have said that, you know, I'm not in pain. I'm sure she, her English was not, not that limited. So that was my mistake. And from there on, I'm really being careful not to bring my assumption. I will really ask, um, assess, I do assessment uh, by using their, their patient's own words. So that's something I learned from this experience. Okay. Um, you can also mention, um, <laughs> it, it's hard to tell, like, should you have, could you say something about using the translator or is her English like not bad enough that she needed it? It's kind of hard for me to tell. Um, it was really limited. Um, I could use like use, uh, that's the thing about ESL. I think it's good for me to know what kind of words they know. So I 
I could communicate um, enough to tell her what I was going to do or something like that. Um, but yeah, she was quite limited. I think she was crying and I kind of panicked at the same time. But if I asked her, probably she could say, I don't know if she's going to say she was missing finally, but she could say something to let maybe, me know. Maybe was... say, um, you know, that you're you're going to go find the, the translator machine just to make sure if, yeah. um, if you yeah. think it might be a language barrier. Right. It was for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's what I should do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because just saying, do you have pain? If she says yes, that is your assessment, you know? You did the right thing. Yeah, I just kind of assessed. I don't know. I felt like I... You feel like you projected I, it onto her, huh? I Yeah, I feel like I just made a wrong assumption. You know, yeah. I kind of made a judgment before I asked her. That's how I felt like. You know, yeah. I should say, oh, are you okay? You know, how are you? Are you feeling, you know, any pain? Maybe, but I said, you know, are you in pain? That's the first thing I said. Uh, okay. And I was like, eh, why did I do that? You know? So. <laughs> I think this is this is good. Um, just add the piece about um using the translator whenever you're like the next not one hundred percent sure mm -hmm. that they don't need it. Yeah, um, I should just to kind of like respect their rights, you know. Right. I I think <laughs> if she wasn't crying, probably I did. But yeah, yeah, it just yeah, it was like was that the third shift, third or fourth shift? So mm -hmm. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Like the, the main points from this com this um question come from your yes. ability to take accountability and make changes. Okay. So, you know, you took accountability and you're going to make changes and so you'll get full points. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah I think um like take a responsibility and what's the thing? Um, and don't blame other people, something like that. So yeah. 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 100%. Okay. Um, I have to be careful. With that. Yeah. I don't think yeah, I blame some, other people. Some people answer this question and the end of their answer is, well, see, because of how the story ended, technically I did not make a mistake. And it, they think oh. that it's good because they didn't make a mistake, but it's actually no, for this question, it's about taking accountability. Mm -hmm. So they don't get the points. <laughs> <laughs> That's not yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no, this is perfect. If we called your last manager, what would they tell us about you? Uh, um, for sure, one thing, he always said the same thing to me. I am a great go-getter mindset person so I you know even if challenges some challenges I get excited that's what he thinks I'm like I don't know I'm getting excited but I do enjoy challenges that's for sure um and I do love to do some research try to find how I could fit you know in and everything so yeah he really um he really every single actually um uh, feedback he always says I'm a go-getter person um, the other thing he always said was the, uh, I'm a very trusting, you know, person. If she said something and, you know, usually I can, I can make it happen. And if I can, I will make conversation with him. I will come to him and, you know, tell him my honest observation or, or like it could be delayed and I'm going to tell him beforehand. So he knows that what is going on with my project. So that was something that he really always said. Um, that he he really enjoyed working with me. I really worked with, enjoyed with him. I just happened to change the career, but yeah, he, we've been still keeping touch, and yeah, we have a really good relationship. Um, just a slight change. Instead of saying trusting, um, say trustworthy. Oh yeah, trustworthy. Oh yes, yes, yes. trustworthy. Um, no, that's why he always write trustworthy. Yeah. Um, that yeah. is. That's I love that. What if they say, tell us about a time that you got constructive feedback from ah, an instructor? I personally enjoy getting a critical, uh, constructive criticism. Um, I myself um, love to kind of criticize myself to get better for the, for the next day, basically. But, you know, when it's constructive criticism, you they really give me a chance to think about it. And I really enjoy getting all everybody's opinion and I, I enjoy working with people so you know everybody has different opinion different views but most of most of times honestly when instructor gives me constructive criticism it's very useful so I I 
kind of, I mean, people think it's weird, but I really enjoy listening to them. I take notes and try to practice, you know, try to be mindful about it um, for the future practice. So yeah, I, I don't know. I'm very positive about constructive criticism. Okay. Um, and can you give us an example of one thing that they, like when you're telling this answer, give an example of one thing they said and like you yeah. made changes and now your practice is better in what way? Yes, for yeah. sure. Um, so I was giving a report to the next shift the person, no, next shift nurse. And I was basically all over. It was, it was, um, you know, some system. I mean, it was, let's say I was going with like a nervous system and then I went back to like, you know, pulmonary and then got back to the nervous system again. It was, it was just not organized. So um, the the instructor told me, maybe just go from head to toe, you know, and then whatever important things you should, you know, say. And if it's not important, you don't have to say it because otherwise your <laughs> report's going to take forever. And I'm like, okay, that's right. You know, I was so nervous because it was like one of my first reports. And um. From then, actually, I she my my um my clinical instructor she practiced with me every week after the shift, at least one patient. So I can kind of like really think about how I'm saying, how I'm representing it. So yeah, it was just great experience for me. But yeah, I mean that was one of the 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 criticism I got. And I okay, perfect, on. perfect. Can you please tell us about a time when you had to be the one to provide constructive criticism or to help a team member become better at performing their job? Yes. Um, so I had a I had work in that time and my patient was on the vegetative state. And this patient, according to the chart, there was no brainwave activity when we talked to her. But it just I didn't, that's not my care. I always care for patient equality and I was it was telling this patient what I'm going to do you know what kind of procedure I'm going to do it just moving or wiping her face anything um so that day I had we had a float nurse um as a break nurse and break during the my nurse break break nurse came in and I realized that she does not do any of those poking um and I I just felt uneasy um to work with her and I thought it was better practice to really, you know, working careful patient equally. So, and then she actually said something wrong in front of the patient and something negative in front of the patient. I really, that that was something I really felt like I had to talk to this nurse. So we stepped outside, uh, she was charting, and I told her that there is actually a note saying that her, so her eyebrow movement when she talked to her and, you know, I think for us professionally, we should probably talk to the patient, you know, what we are going to do together um, and just, you know, take care of her just like everybody else. And she looked at me and she said, well, I was going to say something like that. And I was like, well, okay. So I will, I was actually decided that I'm going to be a model, just be a model of high standard of care. And um, she she stopped saying anything negative in front of the patient, but she didn't change as much. But I'm hoping that, you know, I, me speaking up a little bit, maybe she has some time to think about it and she could change for the future. Yeah. I like this. And then sometimes the points for this question is your, yeah. not only your ability to like, you know, stand up and say something when someone is talking to a patient in a way that's disrespectful, but to give the criticism in a way that is gentle and supportive. So just say, yeah, okay. say something about like, you know, whenever I, at the end, like whenever I give feedback to someone, mm -hmm. um, I just like to do it in a way that is supportive. And I see, I see. Um, basically like, like when I give feedback, my goal mm -hmm. is like, I still want them to feel like I'm a good nurse afterwards, mm -hmm. not think like, oh, I'm a terrible nurse because she thinks like uh, I said, you know, so to do it in a way where they can still feel good about themselves. Right. You know, they know you believe yeah, it. Okay. Them. Right, right, right. So, you know, I, I love to give feedback in a way that is supportive um, mm -hmm. and uh, doesn't convey 
judgment on on the person right. just like uh kind of gives them tools to work with to support them right yeah. okay i'll think about that i did a yeah, uh, yeah. I just so they know like in the future like whenever you give whatever advice you're gonna do it in a way that the person still feels like confident after you know oh yeah i mean i i told her you know i thanked her for you know helping me for this and that and you know there's some yeah. skills that i didn't know that she taught me so yeah at least i up. at least i think yeah but so yeah it was kind of like a sandwich approach where you say something that they've done well and then mm -hmm. what you need them to change and then you know thank them again for their right, help right. or whatever yeah that's, that's what perfect. i should do yeah yeah i like that okay because um, a lot of people say like what do they say like the sandwich thing right i don't know what you call it but yeah <laughs> it's always it's like common. praise first and then or <laughs> praise yeah. next, getting praise kind of thing <laughs> yeah 100 percent can you please tell us where you see yourself in one in five years? Okay. So in one year, I'm hoping to be confident in NICU. And then also, um, I'm hoping to be somebody who can be considered for the uh, nurse shared leadership at the, uh, because I'm really interested in quality improvement and patient safety improvement as a committee. Um, and uh, in five years, I'm really hoping to at least have a certified alum NRC NIC. And um, also, I'm hoping to be working on DNP because I'm actually interested in teaching as well. So I really would love to be a nurse preceptor or instructor to be a good model, good example for the future nurses that I would know. But I'm still hoping uh, in five years, I'm hoping to still chase the goals okay um it cut out a little bit so i didn't get a chance oh. to quite hear but um just make sure you say like you said charge nurse preceptor because that helps with flexibility for their scheduling yeah so scheduling. i was oh that's right yeah i was gonna do dnp while i'm gonna work as a, a bedside nurse that's what i was gonna say but yeah charge nurse anything but i really want to be like neither teaching you know kind of yeah. nurse that yeah i don't want to just Sit on the, I don't know how do I say it, but I really want to be. You don't want to just coast. A good model, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what if they say, um, mm -hmm. you know, if you accept this position, it requires a two-year commitment. Are you agreeable to that? Yes, I have no idea. I'm gonna commit for five years. <laughs> should I? <laughs> how should I, I say this? Here. Um, <laughs> no, I, seriously, forever. I have. I'm. This is my dream job. So I'm like, no, yeah, of course. But um, they say something like, "We only have um, night shift available. Do you have a preference, days oh, or nights?" No, not at all. Actually, I'm kind of interested in night shift, anyways. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've only worked in day shift so far for clinical rotation. But I'm actually interested in night shift as well. So, no, I don't have any okay preference okay. is that okay i really actually yeah. don't no that's good okay. no i had this um elderly female patient and she happened to have a male nurse that day um and she did not want her male nurse to come into her bathroom so she she needed somebody to support her ambulate her to the bathroom but she didn't want male patient male nurse to do it so i was there so i helped her she was really grateful um, and I talked to her. She said, um, nobody but my husband really should see me in the bathroom. And I go, oh, that's so sweet. And um, we actually built a good relationship with this patient. Um, and I don't think the nurse switched. But in, in the end, somehow I was taking care of her a lot more than what happened. But yeah, her nurse. And um, we actually did her walk because she didn't want anybody to any male to touch her either so pt wanted her to walk but she didn't want male nurse so i was you know walking down the street with i walked down the hallway with her and we really helped each other and she was she was very happy about um this situation i'm sorry i didn't talk about i didn't mean to talk about the nurse switch but something happened and i can't remember the whole story but i'm just gonna say that i was there to support her need and you know yeah yeah um and then maybe say something at the end just to finish it off that like every patient has their own individual I, preferences and you mm -hmm. you love to be able to learn 
what it is that will make them the most comfortable. Right. But it's different. Right, right. Yeah, that's one of the first thing I, I try to ask, you know, is there anything I should know about, you know, your culture or your background? I mean, it's just, yeah, there's so many. So, yeah. Yeah. I will do that. Yeah. Um, and sometimes for the patients who are nonverbal, like when you, you can't, the, the translator isn't really going to help because they can't talk. So when you see like their family, you can ask like, what are their favorite foods? Like their appetite has not been good. Like what, what do they love? Like, yeah. Well, that's what I do for the, uh, um, the palli- palliative care house because yeah. all, non, almost all of the kids are nonverbal. Yeah. And I basically have, we, we have this chart that it's, it, you know, it doesn't talk about of course, disease or anything, but it talks about what the kids likes and we kind of like, you know, play around what he might like this day, she might like that day, you know, it's, and it, they are nonverbal, but they can communicate in a way um, that you can tell that they're not happy <laughs> or, you know, yeah. they need something or they're very happy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's something yeah. I do. For Nikki, you should have at least two stories of mm-hmm. when you escalated something that was uh, oh, like yes. critical concern. That was the one that we practiced last time. The, uh, well, I only have one so far, but I'm this will practice. be the time you advocated, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to practice this question. Uh, or if they say like a time you worked with the team, like any opportunity you have to tell this story take the first opportunity because if you get to the end of the interview and you didn't tell the story it's a missed opportunity yeah I really want to say at least this diabetic patient yeah uh, that I included everybody and the uh you know somebody in the team contacted the pharmacy and we verified the d50 this time I'm not gonna mm-hmm. say across d50 <laughs> and mm-hmm. I same idea <laughs> god and then I'm gonna like I'm gonna summarize basically saying that um, you know I will always stay alert to any changes and I always uh, pay attention to promote patient safety, quality improvement for any situation, and you know critical thing critically think the situation quickly. And I involve the team or other members as as I need it, and um, just try to work as quick as possible for any critical condition as a team or yeah whatever that was the thing yeah yeah I don't I'm trying to think a second and the end of your answer will just be like whatever the question is making the story Mm -hmm. fit to the question right whether it's about teamwork or whether it's about advocating or whether it's about like you know you could talk about how with the NICU you might have a lot of patients who uh, are nonverbal and like noticing things like diaphoresis can clue mm-hmm. you in because their body still communicates. You right, just right, have right. to get better at noticing those things and being observant. Right, right. And that that's one yeah. of the things that you love about this patient population is the ability to really develop those skills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have to think about the NICU patient really. I mean, we don't have emergency, emergency. Well, we had emergency C section and the baby was born basically like I don't really know like not vital for like how many minutes it was scary but I was only observing and I was like oh what do I do so mm. but at least I mean I I don't know there was nothing I could do hands-on because it is a real critical issue so yeah yeah what about like sepsis you you ever had like have you ever had a baby with like an infection and you prevented sepsis? No, but or something. Yeah, it was very interesting. There was one infant who I thought he was developing sepsis, um, because his um, um, his uh, the respiratory rate was like elevated and going back, and like it was periodically going up and going down, and we thought he has probably like you know um. His lungs were maybe fluid, you know, filled or something. But every check we didn't know. We didn't. So that that was that. I was like, I, I was thinking about that as an example, but I'm mm-hmm. like, we never figured out what was wrong with him. We gave him antibiotics because we couldn't find anything. And but it yeah. was very something. Interesting. And he got stabilized and he was okay. But yeah, that was just 
you can still talk yeah. about it if you want. Like, I don't know what, just have it in a story mm -hmm. in your back pocket to pull out if you want to use it, but you can right. talk about the workup that you did because what they want is your thought process. It doesn't matter gotcha. if okay. you got the right answer. It's, you know, oh, okay. all the workup that you did. Yeah, we tested his blood and we called the, uh, the, oh my God, what is that? Rapid? Not MR. That was like a portable chest x ray x ray yes that was a portable x ray for the patient and yeah we had to involve physician and try to make sure that this patient is you know is going to be stabilized so yeah i can probably i should at least have that in my mind in case um what if they ask you can you tell us about a time that you advocated for a patient if you're not going to use this uh, like let's say you already use this story for teamwork so you need another new story right. for advocating, um, advocating advocating for patient another language barrier one that's not well it's not super critical probably but there was a patient and she basically had no english at all um everything was trying to do a gesture and she was really withdrawn i could see she was withdrawn because she couldn't communicate and this patient had the foot amputation and you know we are trying to just make sure that she is not going to um experience um hypoglycemia or any any critical you know situation um and i tried to use the interpreter and on the chart the epic there was nothing listed for her and i thought that was kind of strange um because somebody talked to this patient before so i finally kind of clicked in my mind and i looked up the uh physician's note instead and physician's note had the language code and that one was in the translator. So mm -hmm. I grabbed the translator and then start communicating with her using the interpreter and they worked out beautifully. Um, but yeah, like any, any time um, I have something like this, you know, try to be really patient advocate for any time, you know, the patient is not feeling happy and I mean, not feeling happy, but feeling comfortable in the hospital. I try to assess, I try to be open-minded and, you know, be creative so that I can be a patient advocate in, in a good way. Yeah. You can use this. Sometimes they ask um, a time you had to be creative or innovative. Uh, if that question. comes up, that has to be, this has to be still available. Yeah. I don't think I have anything wrong. Well, the diaper one, I guess. Yeah. Ah, oh, Okay. That's yeah. the that's the worried for me. That's a concern for me all the time. There was something. There was a story you told about. You knew that the sucrose had a side effect, and so you tried. Oh, that was EVP. Yeah. Yeah, you could use that for like a creative. That was creative. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, let me just it. pull up the list real quick and see if uh sure, sure. we have not talked about yet. Because I've been jumping all over the place. Yeah, you have a lot of uh, questions. So. <laughs> this is going to be so useful, though. We so, talked about strength already. What about weakness? So weakness, I was thinking about to, to say about um, I'm a little little too critical of myself. Mm -hmm. um, it's I think it's part of my culture um, plays in a role. But, you know, I... I tend to focus on negatives um, when I critical crit criticize myself, and I tend to forget, you know, what I accomplished, or what, 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 or what I'm proud of my about myself. So that's something um I keep working on recently, um, especially during the accelerated ABSN program. I really needed the you know affirmation that I'm doing fine. Um, so I was really learning to be you know okay to be proud of myself for my accomplishment like you know as easy as small as like I'm getting a good grade you know even with all the um, busy work busy days with the kids and families um so yeah that's something I practice right now I'm just a little too critical of myself so that's probably my weakness okay but I, I keep working on it yeah I like to because I'm kind of the same way I feel like it's really common with nurses like when I'm a preceptor, I always tell them like, what's one thing that you 
we'd handle differently maybe if we encounter it in the future and they can say something that they want to change that they're not proud mm -hmm. of but if I say tell me one thing that you feel like you handled really well like you're proud of how you handled it they're like oh I feel uncomfortable I know I I'm like, it's no, really like, hard yeah but it, I feel like it helps you like let go of the day before you try to fall asleep yes. at night. If you can yes. say at least one thing that you did well, one thing you want to improve, and then you're not allowed to think of it anymore. Like right. it's done. Yeah. Yeah. It really, it's a good thing to criticize myself, but yeah, I mean, I think I'm really focusing on the, the mistakes yeah. or yeah. concerns. And you know, I talk about, I, I always think about like how to improve later, but I feel like I'm not doing the best job for myself. Yeah, I was saying I was thinking that um first of all I'm going to be mindful to myself and um you know I do care about this patient because you know I did everything I could have done um and you know I did my job. I I did my job taking care of this patient. Um that's why I care about this patient's death. And I do uh, practice self, self, um, how do I say, um, self, um, self care, oh, okay. so that I can do like I do like you know work. Out. Um, I try to do it by myself or dogs that somebody is not talking to me. Um, I just reflect myself and just try to think. Um, but then you know I always try to, in a way, separate, you know, my lives and my work. Um, so that's what I do when I walk, um, when the patient dies. Um, and I do think about the patient, but I do think about what I should do, you know, today or tomorrow. And then I also talk, like, just talk with the nurses in the team, how I feel and just share. If I need counseling, I'm going to go to counseling. Um, but so far, just talking out loud about, you know, then sharing the stories and Doing a self care has been helping. Yeah. What if they ask you about your hobbies and your self care? Like, um, I am kind of like hobby junkie type, but I love um outdoor. I love mountaineering. So I do backpacking. I do camping, fishing, anything that sort. So it's been yeah. I mean, I I'm like kind of easy going in you know, a way. I don't need anything. I can just walk out, you know, walk outside and I'll be happy. Something happened. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my hobby. I do, you know, load of biking. If I need hours to kill, then I'm gonna just do it. But it really helps for me to clear mind when I do I go outside and be in the nature. Yeah. A lot of people talk about changes that were caused by COVID, you know, like the policy changes and having the mm -hmm. adjustment that the patients had to go through and helping them through that, you know, like they have to wear the mask right, the right, or whatever. Yeah. Well, I couldn't go to the, the patient's room who has COVID. So I had to be creative and I was basically charting right outside the door. So mm -hmm. my nurse, if he needs, he needs anything, I could go get it. He doesn't have to, you know, ungown up and ungown again and stuff. So yeah, that was something I had to learn on the spot. Cool. But yeah. Smart. Yeah, no. I, I I was doing that, you know, not the station, but I was kind of not close from him and then I saw him, you know, going up and going. I'm like, oh no. So yeah, I was like, okay, I can help you. I'm just gonna wait there. Just tell me what you need. <laughs> yeah. When we had the group project um for community health, we it was a group of 10 of us and it was all online planning. So it was a little hectic, I would say. Um, so I I play an acting lead role for that for the group. And I basically created um a group, not shared documents, uh, like a presentation, a uh, Google, Google, Google slide and uh Excel also so that we can kind of like keep eye on our update. And also I create the uh, chain mail so that we can figure out who needs help, what has to be done in time kind of thing. So yeah, so I did that and everything went smoothly, uh, luckily. So yeah, that's how I 
do. Just try to make sure I'm going to be on top of it, check in with everybody um, periodically and, you know, delegate the tasks if needed. Kind of things. Okay. Have you ever trained another employee? Oh, I mean, my previous work. Yeah, you could say yeah. that too because it kind of it kind of also makes you sound like a leader as well. You oh, okay. Just oh, yeah, yeah. mention that you've done that too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna come up yeah. with some kind of story then. Okay. Yeah, because that kind of um, because I'm thinking, how do we bridge sort of what you talked about? And it would be maybe like doing audit, or maybe you're the the committee leader for something, and they, I'm like, mm -hmm. how does how is this useful for the manager, right? There are oh, ways okay. that it kind of translates, but then also like training employees, right? You could be uh, the preceptor, you could be the, uh, you could take nursing students. And like, if you're a leader enough that your old employer wanted other employees to be trained exactly like you, you must be a good employee if mm -hmm. they want to copy you, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. No, I think both, both are good. If they ask about a time you found it justifiable to break a policy or, or change the procedure, you can talk about the thing about how you yeah you didn't somehow you you went through the appropriate channels right <laughs> that's the most important <laughs> yeah. yeah you didn't go rogue yeah yeah what if they ask like um what assistance do you think you'll need from a preceptor like what kind of preceptor are you hoping for what do you need from us to help you succeed oh my god um first of all with some of the skills i want to solidify um that's one thing i hope i i can learn some tricks that preceptor learned through the work um it's been really helpful when i have a preceptor um, in the unit so that's something i'm looking for um looking for and also uh like i've been talking about the communication skills that was phenomenal i would love to really learn from how they talk how they communicate with patients so that um, we can build a great relationship with the patient and their families okay you yeah. can also say because i feel like this is very on brand for you you could say mm -hmm. um you'd love to have a preceptor that can show you where your resources are that way you know yeah where's the policy and procedures how do i call a code stroke like how do i okay. reach out to rapid response how, who's the cns like how do i find them um right, right, right. like someone who can show you like because you're as a new grad you're going to have a lot of questions mm -hmm. and you don't have to have all the answers you just have to know how to find the answer to your question mm -hmm. so okay can show you your resources okay okay all right I want to talk about that yeah okay. can you please tell us yeah. about a time when you um were able to improve patient outcomes um in regards to national patient safety goals okay yeah so um whenever i come i really work on the patient safety one of the thing i always work is you know try to get the most updated resources so one of the thing i can talk about is body catheter usage um i know that you said your polycatheter will increase the chance of UTI for the patients. So I wanted to make sure that I know everything about polycatheter and take care of the patient correctly. So when first time I encountered with a polycatheter, uh, a patient with polycatheter, I reached out to the uh, clinical nurse specialist in the unit and uh, got the SOP and uh, those checklists they use for every 12 hours check for polycatheter usage. And I read through that before um, I'm going to take care of the polycatheter. When I came in, I made sure the drainage bag is not, you know, that on, not touching the floor or lines correctly lined so that um, it, there is no backflow. Um, so there was one incident in later time in the different clinical rotation that there was a patient who was going to get transferred to uh, surgery. And that time that the drainage bag was very close to that floor. So I unhooked and hooked higher. And in the process that the line got a little bit dangling. So I had to fix that also. And I had to make sure that it's not back flowing. Um, and then pericare was, you know, done correctly. And also, um, you know, assessing the need for this one, was this patient was surgery, but other times I was assessing the needs of the folly so we could 
you know, removed as quick as possible. And I was on top of, you know, when I should notify the physicians. Um, so yeah, I was just trying to be very careful and very diligent with the usage of Foley catheter um, with the most updated resources that I could have hands on. Beautiful. What if they say, um, that's all the questions that we have for you. What questions do you have for us? Um, this is what I asked the last time. Maybe I watched your video, I'm not sure, but the what is the unit's goal uh, yes. currently going on? That was the uh, yeah. that was the question I asked the first that time. That helps for your thank you letters. Yeah, oh, so last time, they didn't want us to send thank you letters. Isn't that weird? Mm. No, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want it okay so i was like okay yeah so i i was actually i i wrote something already and i was gonna add something to send it and then they said no i'm like oh mm, okay. <laughs> so yeah i don't know i think the last time i did though anyway i did to uh um hiring not the not the uh units but e, e, uh, hr person mm. who was organizing it i just said you know can you please send Oh, my appreciation to them kind of thing but yeah yeah that was it um okay. you can ask um can you please tell me what the orientation process looks like yeah that was something people asked um and also um the other thing was like you know what what are you what i what was that um like the end of the end of the new grad program um what what are you expecting us to be accomplished kind of at, mm -hmm. at that point kind of things i don't love that um because then it's like know, what's was, the bare minimum you know not yeah you know, i was I sure. feel like I what could be so. better is like what do you feel are the qualities that make a really successful new grad yeah that would be cool great. yeah or yeah, cool. um if i were to get the job what would be the best way for me to prepare in the meantime yes i asked that in the second interview yeah 